Matthew 24, verse 30. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. Why? For they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. Every eye will see Him. That is the scope of His coming. Every eye will see Him. It is visible. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 1. And I won't be before you long. We're going to go Roman through Romans. You know, the, uh, the preached word or the word preached is the power of God to salvation. It's the word of God that makes changes in our lives. It's the word of God that increases our faith. It's the word of God that is the power of God to salvation, the gospel of God. We need to hear the word of God. Uh, it is my endeavor to preach through the word of God that we can hear instruction based on the word of God. Amen. Amen. So we, we are going to roam through Romans here. This epistle was written by the apostle Paul. Paul wrote this around 57 or 58 AD uh, from Corinthians when he was hoping to go to the city of Rome. Um, it would be three years later before he would actually make it to Rome, but he's writing this letter to them, the theme of which is the gospel of God. But Romans, we started Romans chapter 1, verse 1. If you stand with me for the reading of God's word, we're going to... Be in Romans just for a moment. Amen. Amen. Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making requests if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith bond of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. You may be seated. Amen. 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 So Paul here in the first verse, he starts out by saying, He's a servant or a doulos, a slave of Jesus Christ. A doulos. A doulos was a servant back then that had no rights whatsoever. They could be killed at a moment. They were just servants. They were just slaves. Paul starts out by saying that he is a doulos of Jesus Christ, a servant called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Now, Isaiah, that eagle-eyed prophet, said in Isaiah 7, 14, 
the holy virgin shall be with child and she shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. These, this gospel was prophesied. This good news was prophesied. Paul is telling us for by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Glory to God. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power. Now, Jesus did a lot of miracles. He raised people from the dead. He opened blind eyes. He cast out demons. And these works alone convinced many that he was the son of God with power. Mm -hmm. Now he said, because I go to the Father, greater works shall you do. So because he goes to the Father, we should be able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Even raise the dead. Even cause blind eyes to see. But the most important miracle that Jesus did is getting up from the grave. Amen. Glory to God. And because of that, he is declared by to be the son of God with power. All power. Mm -hmm. See, we, you and I, we may be able to lay hands on somebody and they get better because of the spirit of Christ that's in us that we can lay hands on someone in the name of Jesus and they recover. Amen. Glory to God. But we can't get ourselves up from the grave. That power alone is given to Christ. It's given to Christ because the time is going to come when the arch, when, when the, the trump of God is going to blow and the Lord himself is going to call to us mm -hmm. and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And those who are alive and remain will be caught up with them in the clouds. That power is given to the Son. Mm -hmm. Declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Now, he could have healed people and, and he could have caused blind eyes to see, but if he didn't get up from that grave, we don't have a Savior. Jesus got up from the grave and because of that, we have restoration back to the Father. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. By whom we have received grace and apostleship, verse 5, Amen. for obedience to the faith. What faith? Obedience to the faith. We know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that faith must come from the word of God. The word of faith is the word of God in you believed. Mm -hmm. You see, the devil knows the Bible. Mm -hmm. The demons believe in Christ. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the word in you mixed with faith, it won't prosper you. Amen. Amen. You can have a, a head knowledge of the word of God, know this Bible from cover to cover, mm -hmm. but don't make no application. Mm -hmm. So it's not doing you no good. Not being mixed with faith by those who hear it. And what are we supposed to hear? The word of God mm -hmm. from this holy book. Amen. Not opinion. My opinion can't get you saved. Amen. My opinion can't deliver you. My what you know, my, my any denominational tradition don't make you holy or sanctify you. Jesus said, I sanctify them through your truth. Your word is true. So we have to get into the word of God. In order to be obedient to the faith, not, a, not, not obedient to traditions passed down by men, but obedient to the faith which is in this holy book. This is what God, God is not obligated to uphold nobody's religious tradition. 
we could, you could be at a church and go, oh, this is how we do it, this way. You know, that don't give you no religious or righteous merit with God. Obedience of the word of God is what, get, is what puts you right with God. And, he, and Apostle Paul was saying, we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Now, I applaud uh, the mission trips. You know, a lot of churches take mission trips. They go down to Central America. Mm -hmm. They sponsor these things for the youth so they can go. It's a really good thing. You know, hopefully we'll be able to do that at some point. Uh, go uh, and visit other countries doing mission trips. But I, I just want you to be mindful of the fact that all of these different nations, America sent out 127,000 missionaries last year to different parts of the world. But do you know just about every one of those nations you can go and find at Walmart right now? Mm. You walk into Walmart, you find Africans, mm -hmm. uh, Latinos, black, white, yeah. Yeah. Puerto Rican, Indian, Muslim. Mm -hmm. So don't forget the mission field that's in your backyard. Uh, you, know, you don't have to go all the way to Malaysia to, pr to preach the gospel to somebody who's Indian. You can go to Walmart. Right. You don't have to go to Africa to reach an African. Right. You can go to Walmart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to Central and South America to reach a Latino. You can go to Walmart. Right. Amen. You, we, in other words, we have a mission field in our backyard as well. You know, I, I'm not speaking against foreign missions. That's an awesome thing. Hopefully, I hope to take part in that. But let's not forget that the people are our next door neighbor, yeah. and, and, and bring it even closer to home. Don't forget about your home. That's right. Amen. 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 Verse six: Among whom ye are ye also the called of Jesus Christ? Now let's not stop at called. Because many are called. Mm -hmm. Amen? We can't stop at cause. And you're the called of Jesus Christ. But we can't stop at called. But many are called. But few are chosen. So we got to make our calling and our election sure. Mm -hmm. Amen? So we got to endeavor to, to, make, uh, to labor in the word. To labor in prayer. To labor in those things, those spiritual disciplines, to grow closer and closer to the Lord. Let's not let's stop at, don't just stop at called. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. We can't just stop at called. Mm -hmm. Among whom ye are also the called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just love that. Grace and peace to you. I don't know if you notice how many times when you read them in, in the New Testament and through the epistles, Paul opened this letter with grace and peace to you. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. But if we get an a email and it don't say, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't show that the person who wrote the email got the memo that things were straightened out or whatever and they send some bad email, our response is not normally grace and peace. You know, we're ready to blast them. Mm -hmm. Or well, on a telephone call, instead of, you know, trying to offer grace and peace, we allow it to take us to a place of frustration. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We're, we're sons and daughters of Christ. We're supposed to look like daddy. We're supposed to look like Christ. Christ, Christ is being formed in us. We need to learn, and this, and, I mean, let the Holy Ghost work in you to be ready to issue for grace and peace to people. We have to be ready to issue grace and peace. My mama broke that down uh, old country way. She said, you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar, Kevin. In other words, and, and probably like the uh, Solomon, he said that a, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a, a hard word, it, it, it turns up strife. So we need to be ready as, as, as ambassadors of Christ, people who are Christ-like, that's why they call you Christian, to give people grace and peace. Grace and peace. Now Paul would maybe get on him in a lot of his letters, he always started out with grace and peace. Even if he has something tough to say later, he'll start out complimenting. Mm -hmm. You know, a soft word. So he can get them to listen. And we need to be people of grace and peace. Mm -hmm. Grace and peace. Amen. Amen. Because how many times, you know you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. It's funny. 
But I'm going to tell you like this here. Me, I need a lot of grace and a lot of peace. Mm -hmm. So in order to get there, I'm trying to be mindful how I treat people. Mm -hmm. You know, am I rushing? I mean, just because I'm saved, you know, sanctified, filled with God's Holy Spirit, you know, that don't give me an entitlement to run over people. Mm -hmm. Let me issue grace and peace with them. Because when I'm in a situation where I need some help, I want grace and I want peace Amen. spoken to me. Amen. And so you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Verse 8, for, for first I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. This goes back, Minister Fitz, to your testimony earlier today that your faith is being spoken of throughout the whole world. You didn't know somebody up in Detroit was speaking about your faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. That's ministry. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So you don't know what deed you're doing that's affecting people mm -hmm. worldwide, nationwide, citywide, <clears throat> or just across your home. Mm -hmm. Praise God. For God is my witness, verse 9, mm -hmm. whom I serve with my spirit. With my spirit. Mm -hmm. The true worshipers of God was, will worship him in spirit and in truth. Some people think service to God is just coming to church. Just singing on the praise team. Just preaching. But God is looking at your spirit. He's looking at your spirit. That's why he told them in Matthew, he said, and when they said, did we not in your name? cast out demons, feed the, the hungry, do all these things. And he said, depart from me, I never knew you because they didn't serve God in their spirit. Glory to God. Paul said, God is my witness. And that's important. It don't, it don't matter what I say. It don't worry about what nobody else say. God is witness. And guess what? He don't miss nothing. Amen. He don't miss nothing we do or say. And so it don't matter sometimes because you could be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. You could say something or do something and be misunderstood, but God is my witness, Paul says. Because sometimes you can be misunderstood. But God is my witness, Paul says here, whom I serve with my spirit, not with, these, not, not with the works of the flesh, with my spirit, in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Making requests, if by any means now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of by the will of God to come unto you. If I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith bond of both you and me. So Paul wanted to fellowship with them because your spiritual gift, whatever God has placed inside of you, mm -hmm. your spiritual gift is for the church to edify the body. That's what the spiritual gift is for. So he wanted to come there and have fruit among them. He wanted to get with them and, and fellowship and, and impart. That's why there's a semicolon there. In the King James Version, at the end of verse 11, there's a semicolon. The semicolon means that what I'm about to say is just important or equal to what I just said. So not only was he going to impart to them or give to them some spiritual gift in verse 11, but he wanted to mutually um, have a bond with them and, and share in the gospel with them. Verse 13. Now I would, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but was let hitherto or, or delayed that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. For I'm a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. God has placed in us a great gift in this, in this earthen vessel. And we owe the world. How dare we go to heaven and not tell somebody about Jesus Christ? How do you, how do you, hold, how do you get a hold of a treasure this great? I got all of heaven 
given to me through Christ Jesus. God didn't withhold nothing. When he gave Christ, he gave us his best. He gave us his all. And we're going to take it and just close it in our vessel and watch our friends and family go to hell mm -hmm. while we know something that can save their lives. Right. Paul said, I'm a debtor. I was persecuted in the church. And the point of a sword, I'll make them blaspheme God. He said, I owe. He got saved. He said, I owe. I'm a debtor. Both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as as in me is, verse 15, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The good news that Jesus Christ has come. John 3, 16. God so loved the world, that's you and I. That whosoever believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm not ashamed of this gospel. God loves you. He sent his son to die for you. And he rose again to restore us to fellowship to the Father. You ever see the commercial called Serve? It's a Serve Pro commercial. It's these guys who run around. They show like little clay figures. They swing it on ropes and they come into houses after fire damage or water damage. And they, they swing it on these little teeny ropes and little teeny people. And then they get out and they have the house all uh, looking brand new again, like it. And that, their catchphrase is, like it never happened. Jesus came to restore us back to the Father. Right. He came to, he came, he came that we might have communion to, with the Father like we had in the Garden of Eden. Now, because of the fall of man, we still have until because of all these these last enemies, but the last enemy he's going to put under his feet is death. And he will put death under his feet. He will. He said, "They will." I'll wipe every tear from their eye. There's nobody going to die. We don't no want pain or suffering. But until that day, we're going to still have the physical ramifications of the fall. Like we're going to die and get sick and stuff like this. But our relationship with God can be restored like it never happened. Right. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Right. Through the gospel. It says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that what? Believeth. Mm -hmm. To everyone that believes. It is the power. The word of God will continue working you. The word of God said it is God, not you trying to get yourself right. It is God that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. In other words, God is in charge of working inside your mind through his Holy Spirit, if you let him, to make your actions look like Christ. If you let the Holy Ghost, see, God, the Holy Ghost won't make you do right. He's there. He will bring everything that you read in this word to your remembrance. Right. But you have to make a choice. Is he Lord? I'm going to follow him. Yes, yes. Or am I going to go the other way? Yes. And I thank God for grace. Hallelujah. Because I've, I've fallen, but I've gotten up. Because of who he is, not because of who I am. Right. Because he continues to work in me, both the will and to do of his good pleasure. And I thank God for daddy. Hallelujah. I thank God for his love for me through Christ Jesus. Yes. This gospel will change your life. If you meditate in this word day and night, yes. it will change your life. Stay in the word. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it is the power of God mm -hmm. unto salvation. It is the power, the mover, the transformer. You've got to have the word of God in you yes, yes, yes. in order to get hold of this thing. Yes. I can't just shout you happy. I can't just... You know, get up here and just, just make get, we get all excited and not give you no word. Right. Because the word is the power yes. Yes. that transforms your life. Yes. You gotta stay in the word. Oh, yes. Eat. No baby that, that don't eat lives. Mm -hmm. Praise God, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, listen now, we're gonna close on this verse. For therein is the righteousness of God. Reveal. Where is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith? Where is it? In the word, in the gospel. Right. So if you're not in the word and in the gospel, then it's not being revealed to you. You can't get it no other way. You can't get close to a Bible. You can't come into a church. You have to get into the word. Yes. The word of God is that thing 
the, it's the, we're at that, verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Look at and verse 16, talking about the power of God unto salvation, talking about the gospel of Christ. So therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And faith is no more than the word of God in you believed. Because you can know it from cover to cover, but it don't, don't make no application. It don't do you a bit of good. Satan know the whole Bible and going to hell. So it, it don't matter if you uh, know it. This word of God has to get into you. Paul said earlier, I serve God with my spirit. God is my witness, whom I serve from my spirit in the gospel of his son. From my spirit. Praise the Lord. So, praise God. We're going to stop right there. We're going to continue roaming through Romans as we... Uh, move on in progressive weeks um, so we can go through the word of God and continue to develop in the word of God. The word of God, see, hearing the word of God brings about a change. You cannot be in the presence of the word of God with a heart to hear and remain the same. The word of God is working in you. It is the power of God. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you God for your word. We thank you God for this time of fellowship. We thank you God for so loving the world that you sent your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life, Father God. And he rose again for our justification. Sanctify us, God, through your truth. You said your word is true. Keep us, God, in your word. Help us to hide it in our heart that we might not sin against you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And thank you for all things. Amen. 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 Prophesy, God provides wisdom, the mind lacks. History's climax, more vivid than IMAX. The sky cracks with Jesus on some. I'm back now.